Hello, my name is Andre. Welcome to a video series on the Midas Pro 3 console. Uh, my church just bought this console. I spent a few days with it, getting familiar and getting to know how it works and how it functions. And I'd like to share that information with you. I'm planning to make a short series, so you'll probably see more videos coming out. I'm going to go over the configuration, um, input strip configuring, compressors, EQs, gates, basically all the information I've been able to, to gather that I wasn't able to find elsewhere online in other videos or maybe documentation. And um, I'm making this as a resource for our audio engineers and as well for anybody else who might be interested in purchasing a console like this. I'm not affiliated with Midas. Unfortunately, they're not paying me to make this. So let's get into it. For the first part of the series, I'd like to take a look at the back of all of the units that come with the console. We have a Pro 3 Surface. We also have a DL371, which is a audio engine processor. They call it a DSP engine. Basically, it's the computer that processes all of the audio that goes through the board. There's also multiple options in terms of stage I.O. I have a DL251 that gives me 48 inputs and 16 outputs. I also bought three uh, I.O. cards that are installed in the back of the Surface. I have two 8 XLR input cards and an 8 in, 8 out TRS cards. And I'll show you how those are installed and yeah, let's get into it. So here we are at the back of the control surface and I'm holding an 8 input uh, expansion card. This is the same card that goes into the modular stage I.O. box if you have one of those. This one I'm going to install in the back of the surface. It's very simple to do so. Um, so this is obviously the visible part of the card but it's about this size and then the connections here in the back. And there's rails in here that allow you to slide it in perfectly. You make it into those rails. It should just slide right in. You might have to wiggle it just a little bit to make sure the connections are secure. But that's it. Once it's installed, take these thumb screws, unscrew them, and screw them in a little bit closer to make sure that the card is secured in place. So once you have the card secured, I'll show you how to set it up and configure it properly so that the board knows that this is the card that's installed in that slot. Now I'll show you how to connect. I'm going to go ahead and use the copper connection on the stage X and Y and I'm going to connect that to the back of my DSP engine. I'm using CAT6A cabling which is a shielded CAT6 the most robust cabling that I found and it seems to be working well. So I'm making a connection to Snake Y on the back of the surface. Let's go over here to the DL371. So there is the Snake Y connection on the DL371. Let's make that one. And we'll do the same thing for the Snake X. Alright, so now that's the connection, that's the only two connections that are required for the surface to communicate with the DSP engine. Next we'll connect the DSP engine with the stage I.O. And I'm using the same kind of cabling to make those connections. So I'll start with one of these uh, eight AAS ports that are on the back of the DSP engine. I'll plug port one into port one here. And I'll repeat that for the other two ports. Now I'm also going to be connecting this unit up here, which is a DN9650 network bridge. I've installed a Dante64 interface uh, for the other side of the network bridge, so I'll be converting AES50 into Dante, feeding it into my infrastructure network, and then pulling it in with a B Dante virtual sound card on a machine elsewhere on the network. So I'm going to make that connection from port 4 on the DSP engine. And I'll plug that into port 1 on the network bridge. 
and port 5 on the DSP engine, I'll plug into port 2 on the DS on the network bridge. Uh, there is a third AES50 connection here. I will not be using that. Uh, it's not required for the number of channels I'm planning to send to it. So those are all the connections that I'll need, obviously aside from power on all of these units. So let's take a look at the DSP engine. We'll take a look at the other connections that are here. Uh, there is the optical snake that I could be using if I was running uh, the DSP engine over, is it 100 meters from the surface? So if you're running a long distance, you definitely want to use the fiber. Here we have AES3 sync, word clock, and an ethernet tunnel, which is a 10 megabit connection that allows you to pass any other regular traffic from the DSP engine to the surface. There's another ethernet tunnel here. And that data just passes alongside the audio and control information going along these snake connections. By the way, uh, the back of the surface also has three additional AES50 uh, connections. So theoretically, I could plug my stage box into the back of the surface and the DSP engine would still be able to communicate with that. I have not tested that, but that's what I've been told. So let's go back to the DSP engine. I have four uh, DSP cards currently installed. If I were to upgrade to a Pro 6 or 9, I would get additional cards that I could install in these additional slots. And that seems like it would be very similar to the I.O. installation on the back of the surface. There's just a couple of screws at the top and bottom. Probably pull this cover off and, and slide the card in. Here we see three power supply units. These are identical to the power supply units that are on the back of the surface. Only two are required to operate. So if one of these connections go bad or the power supply goes bad or the power source disappears for any reason, the DSP engine will continue to run. Same with the surface. Now if we take a look up here at the DL251, we have two power connections. These are different power supply units. But once again, this, there's redundancy here. Only one is required for the unit to function properly. Now that our components are plugged in, let's get them configured in the patching screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press the patching button on the screen access area here by the mouse pointers, which takes me to my ins and outs here. This is the patching screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my mouse to here and near the top. There's a config button. So once I click on that, I see all of the AES50 connections that are available to me, as well as the front house integrated card slots. So the first eight here are stage port one through eight, which are the eight ports on the back of the DL371. The next three are FOH port one, two, and three, which are on the back of the surface. And the last one is front of house integrated I.O., which allows me to select or describe what I've inserted into the I.O. slots on the back of the surface. So for stage port one, I have the DL251 part A. So that's selected here under device type. <clears throat> and there's three different pieces of the 251. So what I need to do is select all three. So port 1 is 251A, port 2 is going to be B, and port 3 is going to be C. The reason for that, I believe, is because each of the AAS50 uh, connections can only carry 24 channels in and out. So because of the number of channels that I'm pulling in from the DL251, plus the redundancy that might have built into the system. There's three different uh, ports that, you, that are used and there's three different times I have to select it. Port four and five on the DSP engine I've plugged into my DN9650 network bridge and those are configured as a generic AES50 device. Here if we go down this menu all we have is the stage I.O. that's available by Midas, the network recorder or just the recorder, the 9696, and then the only other option, which is the one I'm using for 90, the DN9650 network bridge, is the generic AES50. And I'm using two, two cables to connect that. 
Uh, each of those will carry 24 channels. I'm using the DN9650 in 96 kilohertz sampling rate mode and with the Dante card I have in there it allows me to take 32 channels uh, bidirectionally. If I drop down to 48 kilohertz sampling rate I can go up to 64 at which point I would need to connect a third cable and uh, route this to another generic AS50 device. The last part here is the front of house integrated I.O. I want to select the device options. I have two 8XLR inputs on the top two slots and the last bottom slot is my 8 in and out TRS card. So that's what I have selected here. So once those are configured, I can go to the status uh, button at the top of the screen and it will show me the status of my entire audio network, all of the components and all of the connections. As you see here, everything is green. But let's go over what we see on the screen. Uh, this area on the right is the front of house router. The front of house is this big green block here. Underneath that is all of the components of the front of house surface, what we're looking at here. These two green lines are the HyperMac uh, connections from the co from the surface to the DSP engine. I have both connected, both are green. In between those there's a button to swap which connection is active. So if you notice that one of those goes down, it'll, it'll pulse this light up here, it'll pr pulse red if there's any problem here in the system. But if you come up to the screen and for some reason one of those is red, you can swap HyperMac and it'll swap to the network that it's not using. Currently it looks like I'm using the X network, I can swap to the Y and it should actually do that without any interruptions. Here under stage router we have the stage and we have seven DSP card slots. My, my audio system is a Pro 3 so I have four DSP cards installed and then three of those slots are empty. If I wanted to upgrade to a Pro 6 or Pro 9 they'd send me uh, DSP cards and I'd install those into those slots. And then finally here are the connections from the DL371 DSP engine. All five of those connections and what's connected to them on the other side. So the first three there are the DL251 stage I.O. and the last two are the generic AS50 devices which is the DN9650 and then the last three are the three open stage, uh, the three open AES ports that I have at the bottom of the DL371. So now that we've got everything configured, we're ready to move on to the next section.